I think, yeah. Yeah, hello everybody. Good to see you back. Um, next on this stage, we will hear something about deployment, some best practices. So please uh, welcome Heather Floyd. So, good afternoon. Thanks for attending. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how developers and content editors can use Umbraco Deploy to harmonize their work. So really quickly, if I can kind of see through the lights here, uh, who here is currently using Umbraco Deploy? Okay, great. And how many people are not using it and are really curious about it? Great. So I guess the rest of you guys can all just go get some coffee. Um, so what is Umbraco Deploy? Umbraco Deploy is a tool that allows you to transfer a single website between your different hosting environments. So a lot of times you're going to have multiple environments. You'll have your live environment. You'll have perhaps a staging environment. You have a deployment environment for the developers. And you want to be able to keep those things synchronized at the right times. It's a premium Umbraco add-on. And it is included in any Umbraco Cloud subscription automatically. And now it's also available as a standalone on-premise, uh, which means basically you host it yourself product. So basically anyone who wants to could use this tool. So basically what you've got is two pieces to your websites. You have your developer stuff, which is schema, which is this, everything that's in the Umbraco database related to your document types, your data types, links to the templates, everything that you work on in the back office settings area, for instance. And you also have all of your code files. So this is your compiled DLLs or your CS files, all of your front end assets, CSS, JS files, your razor views, static images, whatever else you've got in your site files. These things are all managed uh, in Umbraco Deploy using Git version control system. So a lot of developers are already familiar with Git, and this should not be difficult. The second half is your content and your media, which are also added via the back office, but usually by content editors. This stuff is all deployed also through the back office interface, and it is, uh, has some nice UI for that, which I will show you in a bit. And just one thing to keep in mind is that if you want to deploy content and media from one environment to another, those two environments need to be schema synced already. So that means that they need to have all of the same data types, document types, et cetera. And if you think about that for a minute, you'll understand that, yes, that makes sense. So generally, you want everything to move in a forward direction for your deployments. And this is including your schema and your code, and also generally content and media is going this way. So you can have, right here I've got, in, in my example, three cloud environments. So we've got development, staging, and live. And then we have two separate local development environments. Uh, developers can work locally with Deploy. It fully supports that. And the way that multiple developers can keep themselves synchronized with each other is actually through their cloud development environment. So they can push and pull the Git changes to a central location. And Umbraco Cloud, though we prefer things to move in a forward direction, can handle schema and code updates on various environments, and then it will automatically put a Git commit into your repository so that you can then synchronize it either you know, further forward or back to local. For content and media, which also generally moves forward because you've staged something and now it's going to go live, you can also restore it from any forward environment to your current environment. So if you are working on local, you can actually bring back content from any of your cloud environments to your local machine. This is really helpful when uh, local developers are working on a new feature and they want to make sure that the current live content is compatible with that feature. And they might have been out of, you know, out of synchronization from that because they're working in their own sandboxes. So they can actually go to the live site, pull back all of the content and media, check everything locally, and then you know, start pushing their changes through forward. 
any cloud environment can also pull back from forward cloud environments. So staging can be freshly updated from live, or development can get its content from live or staging as well. So deploy is a great tool, but you still need a process. Because remember from the keynote this morning, people plus technology, right? So the people aspect of this is equally important to the technology tools we've got. The first thing to do is to discuss your workflow desires with all the stakeholders for your site. And so this is obviously your developers and your content editors, but this also includes your legal and compliance teams if your organization requires that. They are frequently left out until the last minute, and then there are problems. The three questions that we need to answer through this process is who works where, meaning in what environment, how many environments do we need, totally, and what are the deployment processes. So for development, generally developers might be simultaneously working on new features and enhancements to a site while the site is live. They are probably mostly working locally on their own computers because that's the best place to do debugging but it helps to have a shared environment where they can synchronize those changes with other developers and also have a place that is visible to other team members to give feedback and approval of any new features. The best plan is to have a development environment that is outside of your general content editor's process because it needs to be safe to be broken or incomplete at times. And you don't want problems on your development environment to hold up other deployment processes for content editors. So for content, the big question is, do we need a staging environment, or can we just have a live environment? Now, Ambraco, as you all know from using it, has a very nice back office feature of preview and publish, and it's very easy for content editors to use this. But maybe you do need a staging environment. So, First is, who will be updating the content and media? There are some organizations where it's actually the developers that have to do everything, so that's kind of a moot question. But in an organization with content editors who are not developers, you have to ask, how comfortable are they with web tools? Are they going to be comfortable having to manage deploying between multiple environments or not? How frequently is content getting updated? Is this daily or multiple times a day that new stuff is going live, or is this very rarely, or maybe something in between? If things are going live frequently, you want to make sure that your process is streamlined and easy for the content editors to use. And if things are being done very rarely, you want to make sure that you have things very well documented, because you never know uh, when the next time is people are going to have to do it. How complex are these updates? If you're doing one-off kind of formulaic page updates primarily, so this might be like posting a blog post, just it's a single content node, or adding a new event and they fill out all the fields on the event node. Those things are actually you know, very easy to just add them, click publish, and you're good. If you're doing something a little more complicated, say you're adding a whole new section, or you're changing multiple pages that are kind of interlinking to each other, and multiple pages are all having something updated simultaneously. That's something that you want to think about, because a staging environment is going to help you put all those changes in place, check them, and deploy them simultaneously rather than piecemeal. And finally, does compliance require multiple approvals? There are some industries where Everything that goes live on a website needs to be reviewed by perhaps multiple internal people. And sometimes these people take days or weeks to do that review. In that case, it really does help to have a separate environment that can be set up and left alone by everybody else while the compliance team takes their time. And also having the staging environment then allows you to push all those changes directly together. So, Here's my warning. You need to balance control and hassle. Because it might be very tempting to set up a lot of environments and have very complicated processes. But if they aren't really needed, a lot of times busy content editors are going to do whatever they can to circumvent those processes to the most efficient and expedient things that they can get done. So don't over-engineer your deployment processes if possible. 
And if you do need to have something more complicated for legal reasons, for instance, just make sure that this is carefully explained to everyone so they understand why they have to go through the hoops that they need to go through. So some rules of thumb. thumb. You always want to have a shared development environment unless you have a single developer working on your project and they are not only the only developer, they are also the one that can approve those changes to get pushed to the next environment. And I guess in that case, you could just work locally and push it to your staging. But generally, you're going to have a development environment so that your, all of your developers can stay synchronized. Simple content updates might not require staging. So if you've got, like I said before, mostly very simple updates, you might not need to bother with a staging environment. You might just empower your editors to just add their new blog post and click publish on the live site and call it a day. And lots of internal approvals require a staging environment, and uh, for all the previously mentioned reasons. So once you've figured all this out, the next thing to do is document everything, train everyone. You want everyone on the same page about what decisions have been made, why they've been made, and what they need to do next. So developers, they need to know where are they working, and when should they push their code to the shared development environment. Maybe you want them to do it every single day so that all the developers are able to stay up to date with each other. Maybe you only want them to push changes to staging when something is feature complete. The simple rule is just try not to push anything to the shared development environment that breaks the site, that causes it to have like some horrific runtime error on the home page or stops the site from compiling because now you've made your bug some other developer's problem. For content editors, the next question is, where do they update? Are they working on live? Are they working on staging? Do they work potentially on both for different types of content? Also, when should they push their changes to either the next environment or publishing them live? Do you have a, any rules around that? And how do they deploy? And how do they verify that, that whatever they expected did actually get pushed to the next place? So. Uh, this is another warning. Accidental content overwriting. Content editors are the owners of the site content. Developers need to be responsible. <laughs> and a lot of times, if a developer does something like, for instance, adds a new property to a home page node because they're building a new feature that needs a configuration value, and then they just blissfully push it to the next environment overwriting all of the content updates on the home page that the content editor had done yesterday. As you can imagine, this can cause a lot of trauma inside a team. So don't do it. Fortunately, Umbraco Deploy has a very new tool that will help us avoid this unfortunate circumstance. Speaking of, a quick tour of the deploy features in case you are unfamiliar. This is the cloud portal. So if you're on Umbraco Cloud, you would log into the cloud website for this. Local developers are pushing their changes using whatever their favorite Git client is up to development. But how do you get those changes between development and staging or live or whatever? And this is where you do it. In the cloud portal, you just push that big green button that says deploy. Pretty easy. Next, what we've got is the in the settings section of the back office, we have a deploy dashboard, which gives us some nice tools for running ma uh, manually certain operations of deploy. And it also shows us the configuration of deploy. So it shows you everything that's currently configured with some information about whether you might want to change those values, which is helpful. And then at the very bottom, it actually shows you a schema comparison. So this will like look at all of the schema items in your system and let you know if some things are potentially out of date and need to be managed. So this is just a zoom in on the three options of the operations. So basically, schema deployment from data files. All of your schema is actually serialized to JSON and stored on disk in a file with a UDA extension, and that's what gets managed by a, via Git. When you do a Git push in Umbraco Cloud or deploy, a webhook actually causes a schema deployment to be run. So it looks at all of those files in the, uh, the UDA files and makes those changes to the, the, the database on that environment. So that's, that's the way it works. And 
particularly if you're working locally and you are pulling somebody else's changes, you're going to need to click this button to update your local copy of the database to match the, the current cloud one. Extract schema is sort of the opposite. That just basically says run through my database and make sure all my UDA files are up to date. And clear cache signatures just handles Sometimes you have an issue where you've pushed some changes between environments, and then you try to push content, and it says that there's a schema mismatch. And you know there isn't. And it's probably because of the caching. So if you just click that, clear cache signatures on the two environments in question, you'll usually be able to complete your content transfer. So for the content editors, um, the most basic is the single node direct deployment. So this is actually a good option if you have a staging environment set up, but you have um, some content going live that's very simple, single page. They can basically deploy it right from the content node itself, so it's almost as easy as clicking the publish button. The other thing that they can do is actually queue items for transfer. So you can collect multiple content nodes, also multiple media items, forms, et cetera and then you can put them all together and have them transferred at one time. As I mentioned previously, this is a great way to handle if you've added a whole new section of pages, you can send them all at once. Also, we've got the workspaces dashboard, which you saw before because that's where the transfer queue appears. But this also shows you all of your currently set up environments with some helpful links to documentation as well as directly into the cloud portal if you wanted to pop over and check on those things. So in terms of content restore, which means we're going to pull content back from a forward environment, uh, you can do a full restore. There's two options for that. One is the workplace restore, which basically says, I just want every single bit of content, media, forms, et cetera, from this environment to be on this current environment. And that's a good thing to do if, you've got an, if you're a new uh, developer getting set up and you just need to pull a copy of the site. There's also the tree option. So this, each of the trees is each of the sections. So you could just restore content or just restore all the media or just restore all of the forms. So that's the difference between workspace and tree. You can also do a partial restore. So if you don't want to pull back the entire website of content but you know that a certain section has been updated, you can just grab that single page or a single section of pages, and you can just restore that. And as you can see, you pick which environment, you decide if you want the children pages or not, and then you can pull it down. And the other thing that it can handle is actually pulling back content you do not have locally at all. So you can do a partial restore where you actually look at a forward environment you get the tree view of that site. You can find any content nodes that don't exist locally and just bring those back. So this was the feature I promised you guys. This is new. This is called Content Compare. And if you check down in your Save and Publish options, you've got a Compare option now. This is very cool. You can choose the environment. You can even choose the, the variant, the language. And you can see some information comparing those two nodes between the, the current environment and the chosen environment. So you can see if, very quickly, if something has changed in a forward environment that you do not have locally. So in this example, if we were to just go ahead and push this content node, we would overwrite the title data that is, has been added on a forward environment. So we probably don't want to just do that. You can also access Content Compare from the tree on the right-click menu. So Umbraco Deploy is great. There are a couple things that are missing, in my opinion. So my wish list. One thing is a way to compare all of your content and media between environments, because a lot of times you make multiple updates over a course of time, and you need to kind of gather them up for a deployment and can't really remember which ones you changed. Or potentially, maybe you have a bunch of content editors working on a forward environment, and you want to know exactly everything that has changed over there that's different from your current environment, so you can individually bring those things back or not. So that would be a nice tool. Right now, you would have to go node to node and click on the Content Compare button. 
The other thing that I was really keen on would be a sort of available Bracco Deploy service API so that programmatically through um, C Sharp code, we could actually queue things for transfer or restore using their UDIs, transfer them now, or maybe you know, take everything that's queued up and then push it. And if we had the ability to program against deploy, uh, I think that would really open up a lot of workflow options for developers, ways to do bulk content transfers or other sorts of handy tools. So to handle the second thing, fortunately this morning in the keynote they mentioned that they're gonna start working on that, so yay. To handle the first problem, I went ahead and started working on a proof of concept to see if it would be possible to actually compare things across environments. And I came up with something, and you are welcome to take, take a look at this yourself. But basically, this takes a snapshot of all of the content and media on the various environments, serializes that to files that, that can then just be um, compared. And so this is just a little demo of a compare. And this will show you any nodes that you have that are on the remote environment and not locally, or any nodes that are local and not remote. And then everything that matches but has changes, you can see a collection of those differences. This is just the sort of the summary information. This doesn't go into the detail of every single property um, because that just seemed like overkill. Because if a property changed, that means the date changed. So that's an easy thing to, to take a look at. Of course, you can always click in and look at the content compare and see really what did change. Maybe nothing important changed. So that's, this is my proof of concept set tool, and I'll keep working on it. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope you have a fantastic code garden. If you are interested in um, notes from this talk or also links to various documentation, my favorite issues on the GitHub, or my code repository, this is where you can find it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. And as always, we will have a chance to ask you questions. You can do that in the app, and uh, you'll be back after Scott Hunter. And Scott Hunter is uh, 4 o'clock, so yeah, see you in a few minutes. <laughs>